Okay, so I'm gonna show you something amazing. A distribution you absolutely have never heard of. Let me introduce you KDE Linux. Not KDE Neon. KDE Linux, which has just a desktop and flat pack applications. No distribution, no base at all. Just the real Linux kernel in the deep system and the desktop and flat pack applications. That's it. So let's get started. And this is the desktop of KDE, the latest version, but that's not the highlight. You see, if I open terminal, well, here it is going to be console. Now, let me just try. sudo apt update. There's nothing. So, if I do it the same with dnf, there's nothing. And if I do the pacman version, it is nothing. So, you see, there's no Ubuntu, no Debian, no Arch, no Fedora, nothing. It is based on entirely nothing. And that's not just it. If you open the software manager and if we check a few things, then as you can see, it only has flat packs and KDE applications, nothing else. And in my opinion, this is sort of the future of Linux in my opinion. Like you have all the applications you're ever gonna need in Flathub. Like Flathub has almost all the applications of Linux and then Having no distribution in the background actually makes it pretty lightweight. And the pure native KDE desktop with flatback applications, it feels slow. It feels, you know, it is so nice. And I know how to explain it, but using this distribution was pretty okay. Like, yes, it is in developer versions. So there are some things which maybe are not that good. But besides that, all the things I have seen till now are pretty amazing. All the applications are running smoothly and you have all the applications available here. Even let's say I want Steam. I want to play games. There it is. Let's say I want to edit videos. I have Kden Live. Oh, sorry, wrong spelling. There it is. Let's say I want to do some graphics editing. I have GIMP. Oh, sorry, it's PIMP. There it is. You see, you have every bloody thing you need. Now, there are some specific tools which might not be available because they are particularly exclusive for distribution or something. But besides that, you get a really nice desktop with applications running over it. And that is just simply as it is. You don't have to mess with libraries, distrib you know, drivers, codecs, nada. You just have to go pick an application and bloody install it. Well, this one actually looks nice. And now this is time for the segue to our sponsor, DataServe. The smart, local-first browser that is built for creators, dreamers, or anyone who actually thinks on the internet. And everything I researched for the video before the pre-production was done inside DataServe, just like this. And most browsers track you, but DataServe doesn't. DataServe is a local-first browser. So yes, I use DataServe and it's not just a browser for me. It's a one-stop destination for my workspace. It is like my second brain. And you can check DataServe with the link in the description. And let's continue the video. So this is an audio visualizer based on Kava. Actually, it looks pretty good. Like, especially the first one. Like, man. Let me just show you the first one. There we go. This actually looks nice. You see, Flathub has the largest library of application. And this makes it even better. Now, I could have just used screen recordings. But the thing is, you see, I'm right now in the live menu. So, I cannot install applications because I'm just using my USB for that. Now, I could have used Spectacle, which is a screenshot or screen recorder utility tool. Like, I can just go there, new recording, full screen, it will start. But, you see, okay, let me just... But you see, there are some things which I don't need it to do because, well, the screen recording would not have been pretty great. And this one thing I want to show you. Maybe it is a feature of KDE or something, but check this out. When you go to display monitor, you see first you have color profiles. So I can just choose an ICC profile or the built-in version and then color accuracy and efficiency. So I'm going to go with color accuracy. And then I have literally man limit color resolution to so i'm just gonna set it to normal then we have srgb color intensity to make it as accurate as i want it to 
and yeah it actually works i can see things in real time then we have edr now you might wonder like what is edr well edr is sort of a technology which allows you to consume hdr content on normal sdr displays it will like mimic the dynamic range to make it compatible these things i never saw these on gnome or any other distribution so you see kde is literally the most powerful and functional desktop out there and this operating system is a gem a diamond for linux users okay yeah let me just apply those and especially when you have nvidia and amd gpu support out of the box and really nice efficiency functionality power you name it kde has all of that and not just that all the applications are running so flawlessly smoothly like man and yeah i would like to try a wallpaper let's try it shall we so let me just go to downloads i downloaded it now you must know that i don't use kde as much as to for gnome but let me just set it as my desktop desktop and wallpapers it is pretty fast let me just check hmm it looks nice like yeah it does but i'm going to just go on with the previous one cancel discard yep i like this because kiddy feels good with this thing and you see gnome also has a similar operating system with nothing just gnome desktop with flat packs just the same as this one is and both of them are in alpha development stage which is the nightly build like whenever you go to an application this nightly which shows the version and yeah let's check the you know system resources so i have a lot of applications going in the background and with that i have right now approximately like 4.1 gbs of them is you know right now using because i have a lot of things in the background i was trying to do a lot of things but leaving that right now i have 1.1 gb of background services and kd connect and system monitor but when we go to the reality there is a hell lot of things going on in the background but i don't care because the desktop is just so amazing and yeah i can just literally raise maximum volume you see speakers are limited to 100 but we can go beyond that man like right now it is like this at 100% and this at 150 now this noise cancellation right now so you might not be able to listen it but it is just awesome what is this vault oh man we can actually set private walls here to be honest i like the whole desktop like the way it is i love it okay there's a lot of customization to that to the desktop you see we don't get this much customization in our gnome desktop i love gnome because of its fluidness simpleness and elegant nature the design it's just a personal preference but for real powerful stuff kde is the king for functionality power customization kde is the king you name it right now i'm on kde plasma 6.5 developer edition well the whole operating system is in developer edition right now as i showed you and let me just explore the settings because it is my first time in checking kde So when I go to mouse and touchpad I have so many options and things like man KDE is actually the most functional right now then keyboard game controllers touch screens well I don't have any touch screen right now I wish I had but I don't then drawing tablets sounds which I just boosted to more than 100 yep and then I have pro files as well like pro audio I actually like the pro audio one but no Let me just go back to my family one. Yep, displays. Then we have a lot of things for display. Let me just explore it a little. Then we have adapter sync, which is like variable refresh rate. Let me just try it. Mm, it's okay. Overscan. What is this? Determines how much padding to put out here and there. Overscan. Let me just call ten percent. Let's try. Apply. Okay. Now I mean, just go back. Okay. then built in i see no color profiles key then prefer color accuracy or efficiency let me just go to accuracy let me just increase it to all the way to 16 bits yep that is the math then brightness we can increase or decrease brightness then legacy applications which is for a business x11 can scale or screen tearing you have all the options 
then accessibility, let's just leave this, then Bluetooth, discs and cameras, yeah, then we have options to use Thunderbolts, well, I'm gonna need to enable or use a Thunderbolt device first, then we have printers, then remote desktops, oh man, these are a lot of them, let's just go through one by one, then colors and themes, this is another theme which is twilight, okay, let me just go back to my priest, then icons, cursors, let's go with beast light, system, book arc, text, animations, okay, we can actually change vertical applications and animations, window management, okay, these are a hell lot of them, I'm just gonna try to make this video as short as possible, then application permissions, KDE wallet, recent files, power management, let's see what do we have here, so let's say right now I'm on battery, we have suspend, brightness and other stuff. Where's the performance part? Okay, we have advanced settings as well. Uh-huh. There's nothing about performance because performance is entirely dependent on the hardware this time. Unlike GNU. Then users. Well, it's a live user right now. Then auto starts, sessions. Okay, it has been something. Okay, let's try screen locking. Okay, we have proper stuff for that. Maybe it uses SDDM this time. Locked? Yep, it is SDDN. But it's nice. Like, I like it. And let me know in the comments what do you think about it. And yeah, what do you think about, you know, Linux users choosing desktops instead of distros? Like, there's a dispute. There's always a dispute over which distro is best. But we should think about which desktop you like. If you like GNOME, then just choose any GNOME-based desktop distro. Because... You're gonna get the same set of applications and things over here and there. It all depends on which one is the most efficient, which one is the most performance, which is best for multimedia, which is best for battery life. Like, every distro has its own features, functionalities, capabilities. Like, if you want to play ga games or you you wanna go for live streaming and stuff, go with Nobara Linux or Bazite OS or Steam OS maybe, or you just want to play normal games, go with Fedora. If you are a developer, go with Arch. And if you're just someone who wants a simple life with simple set of applications and just want to plug and play, start working, you have Ubuntu and Debian based distributions. Like, it's not necessary that if you're a gamer, then you have to go with Fedora based. You can easily play games on Arch, Ubuntu, Debian, any. It all depends on what you like to use. It's about preference not competition. Let me know in the comments what do you think about it and let's end the video now because I have other videos to make as well. So yep, I'll meet you next video. Till then, I'm Oom, signing out.